Welcome back to History of Simple Things. Today's topic comes from one of our viewers, Midland. Thanks for the suggestion. You asked, is it actually safe to reuse cooking oil? Imagine standing in your kitchen, staring at a pan of golden oil left over from last night's frying. It still looks clear, it smells fine, and throwing it away feels wasteful. But a quiet question lingers in the back of your mind. Is it actually safe to reuse cooking oil? This is one of those everyday decisions that seems harmless, yet sits at the intersection of health, chemistry, and habit. Around the world, millions of people reuse cooking oil without thinking twice, while others avoid it completely out of fear. The truth, however, is more nuanced than a simple yes or no. To understand whether reused cooking oil is safe, we need to look at what happens to oil when it's heated, how different cooking methods change it, and where the real risks begin to appear. Let's explore, uh, right here, on History of Simple Things. Cooking oil may seem like a stable substance, but once it's exposed to high heat, it starts to change on a molecular level. When oil is heated, especially during frying, it undergoes oxidation, hydrolysis, and polymerization. In simple terms, oxygen reacts with the oil, water from food breaks down its structure, and heat causes molecules to bond together in new ways. These reactions produce compounds such as free radicals, aldehydes and polar molecules, substances linked to inflammation and cellular damage when consumed in large amounts. The longer oil is heated and the more times it's reused, the more these harmful byproducts accumulate. This means reused oil isn't just older, it's chemically different from fresh oil. The safety of reusing cooking oil also depends heavily on how it was used the first time. Shallow sautéing at moderate temperatures causes far less damage than deep frying at high heat. Frying foods that contain batter, crumbs, or moisture accelerates oil breakdown because leftover food particles burn and release additional compounds into the oil. This is why oil used for frying fish or breaded items degrades faster than oil used for frying plain vegetables. Each reheating cycle pushes the oil closer to its smoke point, the temperature at which it begins to burn and release visible smoke. Once oil reaches this stage, it's a clear sign that it has broken down significantly and should no longer be reused. Different types of cooking oil also behave very differently when reused. Oils high in saturated or monounsaturated fats, such as coconut oil, palm oil, or olive oil, are generally more heat-stable than oils rich in polyunsaturated fats, like soybean sunflower or corn oil. Polyunsaturated fats are more reactive and oxidize faster under heat, making them less suitable for repeated frying. This doesn't mean more stable oils are immune to damage, it simply means they degrade more slowly. Even the most stable oil will eventually become unsafe if reheated multiple times or exposed to extreme temperatures. One of the biggest health concerns associated with reused cooking oil is the formation of toxic compounds. Studies have linked repeatedly heated oils to increased oxidative stress, which can contribute to heart disease, insulin resistance, and inflammation. Some research also suggests that long-term consumption of heavily reused oil may increase the risk of certain cancers due to the presence of aldehydes and other carcinogenic byproducts. While occasional reuse at home is unlikely to cause immediate harm, habitual consumption of food fried in heavily degraded oil, especially from sources that reuse oil many times, can pose real health risks over time.
Visual and sensory clues can help determine whether oil should be reused, but they are not foolproof. Darkening in color, thick or sticky texture, foaming during heating, and a rancid or sharp smell are all warning signs that oil has degraded. However, harmful compounds can still be present even if oil looks and smells acceptable. This is why limiting reuse is important, even when the oil appears fine. Straining oil through a fine mesh or cloth after use can remove food particles and slow degradation, but it does not reverse chemical damage that has already occurred. So how many times can cooking oil be safely reused? There is no universal number, but general guidelines suggest that oil used for light frying can be reused two to three times if properly strained and stored in a cool, dark place. Oil used for deep frying at high temperatures should ideally be reused no more than once or twice, depending on the food cooked. Commercial kitchens often use filtration systems and strict standards to monitor oil quality. But at home, moderation and caution are key. When in doubt, it's safer to discard oil than to risk long-term health effects. It's also worth considering alternatives that reduce oil reuse altogether. Air frying, baking, grilling, or shallow pan frying with minimal oil can significantly lower exposure to degraded fats. When frying is necessary, using fresh oil and choosing heat-stable varieties can make a meaningful difference. Disposing of used oil responsibly by letting it cool, sealing it in a container, and throwing it away properly helps protect both health and the environment. In the end, reusing cooking oil isn't inherently dangerous, but it's not entirely harmless either. The real risk lies in repeated high heat use, poor storage, and ignoring warning signs of degradation. Understanding what happens to oil when it's heated allows us to make smarter choices in the kitchen. That leftover oil in your pan represents more than convenience, it reflects a balance between thrift and health. And knowing when to reuse, when to replace, and when to choose another cooking method can help keep your meals both delicious and safe. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.